Kidd. I'm at the University of Nevada Arena. And my name is Gunnar Newquist, and I'm a postdoc in Tom's lab. And we're here today to tell you about our work linking apoptotic signaling to axon guidance. My lab works on axon guidance in the fruit fly Drosophila. In particular, we've been working on the well-known axon guidance cues, the netrins. Fruit flies have two of these, netrin A and netrin B. And they're expressed at the CNS midline, so they provide a localized source of positional information for growing axons, which are normally attracted to the midline. Gunner developed a line of flies that lack these netrin genes and make it to adulthood and can be maintained there. As you can see from this video, they've got quite a few problems, notably that they can't fly, and although they can run around, they're quite uncoordinated and aren't always able to pick themselves up. So Gunner took these flies and he tried to rescue them by putting the netrins back at the midline. And this, you know, for a large part worked. He then did a counterintuitive experiment where he actually expressed the netrins in all neurons. Now you'd think this would thoroughly confuse the neurons because they don't actually have a localized source of information anymore, so they don't know where to go. However, this experiment actually gave us an insight that led to this paper. So I initially began this work in the adult, but we wanted to go back to the embryo to find out what was going on with the nerve guidance during development. So here we have a wild-type ventral nerve cord. It displays a characteristic ladder-like pattern of the nerves crossing the midline. If we take away netrins, you can see errors in guidance forming. Now when I express net A in all neurons, which gives a level playing field where netrin can no longer guide to the midline, we get the expected result of further confusing the neurons. Now when I express net B in all neurons, instead of an increase in errors, I got a rescue. This was surprising and exciting to us because this suggests other functions of net B besides just guidance. Now with further work, we determined that one of these additional roles is cell survival. So an implication of this work is kind of shown you from his nice rescue experiments, is that netrins, or well, particularly net B, has the ability to promote cell survival in addition to its traditional role in providing navigational information. So this area is under debate in vertebrates as people question whether netrins can promote cell survival there. We've got pretty strong evidence that this is true in the fly. We also have a really nice situation where we've got two molecules, netrin A and netrin B, that will function in the same way at the midline, but differentially when we express them in all neurons. And as I said before, the implication of this work is that other so-called traditional axon guidance cues may also share this ability to promote neuronal survival. So I'd like to point out that we would not have investigated this differential activity of the natrins had it not been for our collaborators at Purdue University, Michelle Drennan and Jim Clemens. They're using a system in which they sensitize the fly eye to cell death, and then they can cross in mutations to see whether they make this phenotype better or worse. If you take away natrin A, the phenotype actually gets better, suggesting that natrin A may actually be promoting apoptosis in the eye. However, if you take away netrin B, you actually make the phenotype worse. So this suggests that netrin B is actually protecting the neurons against cell death in this assay. One advantage of the fly is that we can look at neurons with single cell resolution in mutants and in wild type. So we took a single population of neurons that's responsive to netrin, called the eagle neurons, and we blocked caspase signaling in the netrin mutant in the eagle neurons. We thought we were blocking apoptosis with this experiment. However, we were able to rescue guidance without actually lowering the amount of cell death in the eagle neurons. So to explain these results, we actually think there's two things going on. One is in these neurons, there's a basal level of caspase activation throughout the neuron. If that neuron encounters a guidance cue that has the ability to promote cell survival, such as an entrin B, then you get local inhibition of caspase signaling in the growth cone, and this stimulates axon ag growth. Another implication is that in injury situations, people have been using factors that stimulate neuronal survival. We'd be very interested to know whether some of these factors, if they can inhibit caspase signaling, may actually be stimulating axon ag growth as well. And maybe the use of caspase inhibitors 
could be used in neuronal injury or degeneration situations to promote therapeutic outcomes. Ha 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 ha!